Rebecca Harms. Uh, now the floor goes to Madam Rebecca Harms for three minutes. Meine Damen und Herren. Ladies and gentlemen, in all wars there is a time after you have not been able to move and have seen all the pictures and images and certainly the pictures coming to us from Aleppo are some that makes us realize that uh, we cannot sit idly by. Aleppo is the place where Putin and Assad have created hell on earth and I think it's extraordinarily bizarre that the Russia's media, Russian media has said that Aleppo has become the Stalingrad of Syria, a place where Russian troops have turned Aleppo into Stalingrad. Now, it seems to me in recent days that it's not just this powerlessness, but the rage that we feel to ourselves that comes to the fore because it's not only that we've been deceived by Russia and Putin, but w really in clear conscience, we've allowed ourselves to be deceived and we've allowed him to pursue the path of peace talks. And we thought that there was an international strategy that we could build with Putin against ISIS. Did the West really want to deceive itself? I think it did. And I think with the attack on the aid convoy of the United Nations, that was the most recent example of the case that we really have deceived ourselves and wanted to. And I think it is now, the time has now come for us to be clear about Vladimir Putin and realize that the escalation for which he is responsible has meant that any return to normal relations between the European Union and Russia must be called into question because the Russian catalog of demands that uh, is, uh, has been presented to the US, the US has said it's simply not possible and they have presented this at the time of the height of their bombardment of Aleppo and that catalogue of demands simply cannot be accepted. The EU, and this must be discussed at the summit, mustn't it? The European Union mustn't allow itself to be deceived by a logic according to which Ukraine and Aleppo are going to be played off against each other and the US and EU mustn't waste time thinking that Russia could pay compensation for sanctions because if you do go down the road of the logic of that particular catalogue of demands, then you're going to be rewarding the aggressor and you will be establishing a dangerous principle that must not be allowed to happen. I think that the European Union must be prepared to use its economic might in this dispute and to be consistent in the application of it. I don't think that we can talk about the deterioration of sanctions, but we must insist that we continue to uh, apply sanctions and need them, and that those sanctions not only should be used against Russia, but that our newly established relations to Iran and our relations with the Saudis and also our relationship with Turkey must be seen uh, in, the co in that context. The diplomacy pursued by the European Union in the context that we find ourselves in with Russia and the escalation of fighting, that can only be successful if we are prepared to push that diplomacy to a point where it's going to cost. Uh, Madam Harms, you had three minutes, you spoke for four minutes, and you also have a blue card question from Mr. Sarius Wolski. Do you accept the blue card? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Harms, I share your assessment. Question. Uh, how do you view or assess the situation when, having the same assessment, I understand, Washington breaks the talks with Russia and con condemning the Aleppo uh, drama, and uh, Mrs. Mogherini phones Mr. Lavrov, asking him for help to deliver uh, aid to humanitarian uh, 
uh, reasons to those who are bomb bombed by Russians and Syrians at the same time. This complete uh, divergence between us and America, which is uh, going against all of us. Thanks. Please answer. I think it's very regrettable that Frederica Mogherini is not here. You've made your proposals and nobody would wish to be against humanitarian aid for Aleppo, but there was the bombing of the UN aid convoy and the, that was the first convoy which has been sent into the city in years. And in the wake of that bombardment, we need to think about uh, linking humanitarian aid with a concept that would allow the humanitarian aid to go ahead. And I think that the demands that the Council and the High Representative have made, but also the German Foreign Minister Steinmeier, are really very naive indeed. Please, Mr. Castaldo, in two and a half minutes. Only, yes, okay.